You're listening to WSTU Stewart. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie. It is 6.08 at WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast, and welcome to Small Biz Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> are, we, are you still in Kansas, Greg? Are you? <laughs> oh, man. We're still in Kansas. <laughs> and it's snowing! Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, the most fun of all in that whole crazy episode in Kansas was seeing the guys coming out for practice. Yeah. And we were about ready to board the bus. And the ones who had never seen snow before had snowball fights. <laughs> it was it was so much fun. Oh, man, it was wow. great. What an experience. Though, wow. On the national stage. Nice. Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about that. I, I want to get a little update. But um, for those of you who don't, uh, don't know this, uh, this time slot, I'll, I'll introduce us. Um, uh, welcome to another segment and installment of Small Biz Florida, the broadcast and podcast that is all things business across the Treasure Coast in the entire state of Florida. Small Biz Florida is brought to you by the Florida Small Business Development Center Network and is produced by the Florida SBDC right here at Indian River State College. Small Biz Florida is designed and produced to highlight and promote business assistance resources, celebrate entrepreneurial success, present best practices, and most importantly, provide timely business information for Florida's small business community. I am Tom Kindred, your host and, uh, and former small business owner myself. So, um, so Greg, uh, give us a little recap. The, the Indian River State College men's pioneer basketball team participated in the National Junior College Athletic Association's version of the Final Four. Oh, you bet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 32 teams uh, were there. Uh, some were housed with us in, us in Wichita and others in uh, Hutchinson and others even in uh, Kansas City. Uh, it was it was huge. And um, it's very interesting because, I mean, I've covered like maybe 12 of those, uh, you know, NC2As. Uh, but being in there as an announcer for a team is just a wow. big, big thrill. And we did. So give us the rundown. We won. What level did we get into? We won two games out in Kansas City. Yes. Right? Right. We, we came in as an at large. Okay. Played another at large Dawson College of Montana. Um, beat them handily. And then went up against a team. There's no way we could beat. And this is a team that had been there 25 times. And this is yeah. Idaho, right? I, yeah. you, yeah. College of so Southern Idaho. By the way, they're tied to Idaho State. So, I mean, it's, not, you know, right. It, they're not a, is like Dawson College only has 400 students. Right. They have 20 professors. <laughs> that was our first <laughs> opponent. And, and they had never been there before. So right. those kids were like, their eyes were the size of grapefruits. Right. You know? And, um, and that was fun. Um, the College of Southern Idaho, those guys came in and they just said, well, I'll enjoy your flight uh, back home tonight. <laughs> and so <laughs> wow. when, we're, when we're up by 20 or so, I, I'm turning around to the fans who are all behind me. And, oh, it was like a, a choir loft up there. Wow. <laughs> it was silence. But, wow, yeah, nice. it was a big thrill. And then, uh, you know, uh, we, we make the Elite Eight. Uh, of course, we play in the primetime game which means that three other teams had lost in that. So we were a part of the fabulous five. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. Chipola nailed us again. Um, yeah, you, now Chipola here in Florida, Chipola beat us twice, right? Well, yes. they, they, they beat us for the state championship. Right. And then they beat us in out in Kansas. We wow. were 20 seconds away from, from winning victory. that game. Wow. 20 seconds away from going to the actual final four. Yeah. Wow. It was, it, it, hats off, uh, Charlie and Walt. Yeah. Uh, Jamaro yeah. was there uh, helping out too. Um, it, it was, it's an amazing experience, you yeah. know, and you know, you're one of the elite colleges 
um, in the United States. And by the way, yeah. one of the hosts there, it wasn't for us, but one of the other teams um, was part of the Kansas University wow. SBDC. And I told him we had a weekly show and he said, <laughs> you do. <laughs> so well, if you're listening, did you tell him our syndication fees are very low for this show. We'll be happy to syndicate yeah. out, in, oh, out in Kansas City. Oh boy. So I told him, I said, Hey, listen in. And yeah. well, most importantly, Greg, did you get to go to any of the barbecue places in Kansas City? You know, I didn't. Wow. I, I did. Well, Oklahoma see, Joe's and uh, oh yeah, well, uh, Jack Slacks. <clears throat> oh yeah, and, uh, everybody was recommending places. Wow. And, and Wichita's four. We were four hours away from KC, so okay. yeah, it, it was a long way away. But um, w Wichita State was holding a softball wow. tournament, so we had uh, uh, UCF was in our hotel. Wow. And uh, yeah, that was a little crazy with the players, but hey, that's all right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, He's like fun. you say, hats off to Charlie Wilson and, yep. and the coaching staff and the, and the players and the students really a, a big, um, a big feather in the, the hat of the pioneers, uh, athletic program to, to be selected and, and win two games out there in, uh, with some pretty big schools around us. Oh, you bet. And hats yeah. off to Jamara too. Uh, she made, uh, uh, the state tournament and did very, very well, wow. uh, with the lady pioneers. Nice. So, yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay. It was, it's uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful year despite a pandemic despite a pandemic yes of course another 20, i forgot about that another 20 win season for charlie wow four in a row despite a pandemic wow nice yeah. work yeah yep uh very quickly as i always do just a little um shout out again you you've got you've got some really high level college athletics right here in your own hometown uh basketball men's baseball, women's softball, women's basketball. And of course, I believe this weekend, Greg, is the big uh, annual uh, turn uh, swimming. Um, yep. It's the pre uh, pre Olympians are all here. Wow. Uh, and they're in the pool as we speak. They started at five 30 for the finals uh, on day two. Okay. And we've got two more full days right. of uh, the NJCAA national championships of which IRSC has won. 40 straight wow and that is on main campus all oh, this yeah. weekend right here easy to get to easy to find um come out it's a it's usually a big weekend all kinds of things going on there uh, around that swim tournament and there so, are hundreds of pre-olympians wow from various countries here so i mean it's like okay you've wow. got a preview of the olympics right here in wow okay. <laughs> yeah it's very cool yep Always a good opportunity to come out and take part in some some real uh, college athletics right here in our old hometown. Um, speaking of uh, high level and uh, and uh, you know top of their game, uh, we've got a great guest with us tonight. Uh, I know. Um, uh, watch our numbers; they're going to go off the chart tonight for <laughs> listenership because I'm telling you, everybody wants to know what's going on uh, down at the Fort Pierce. Uh, St. Lucie County uh, Marina area in historic downtown Fort Pierce, uh, you know, director, uh, again, uh, kind of quietly slipped into town about a year ago, uh, but they are about ready to, uh, to shake things up. Um, their lift is here. It is assembled. Uh, I, you know, I can't imagine how many people have driven downtown just to see the lift and, and I can't even imagine what it's going to look like with a 200 foot mega yacht on that lift. But we have got with us tonight uh, a very good friend, uh, Justin Beard, who is with Director Fort Pierce. Uh, he is the marketing and sales uh, development director for the company. Uh, Justin, welcome to uh, Small Biz Florida. Thank you for having me, guys. Good to be back. Absolutely. Uh, can't wait for this conversation, uh, Justin. Um, we need to do this on top of the lift. We can, yeah, I, I got the equipment. We can. <laughs> oh, why not? Come on, Tom. Listen, I'm not scared of heights, but I don't know that I could get on top of that lift. I, I, I may become scared of heights on that lift. I, I, you know what? I want to pull my little 19 foot boat in there and have you have you lift. It okay, up. yeah, yeah. Just to embarrass myself. Um, uh, so Justin, hang tight. Uh, I want to go through a couple of things. It is kind of a, there's a lot going on. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's hit it real quick here so we can get to get to Justin and talk about uh, all the great things going on at the Marina, but I want to start. Listen, you know, you've arrived 
when Jill Marasa from the St. Lucie County EDC calls you, and Jill called me the other day uh, to uh, to go over a few things. Do you uh, owe her money? I do not owe oh, her okay. money. She still curious. called. <laughs> Amazing. But Jill called. Listen, Jill, uh, hardest working economic development person uh, in the state of Florida, possibly the nation. Uh, but let me tell Cheers you, to that. going on at the yes. EDC. So let me let me get through these uh, first. I want to talk about the work local campaign. Incredible campaign, incredible data here. Work local is a new initiative to ensure St. Lucie County workers realize there's an increasing number of job opportunities close to home. The Economic Council of St. Lucie County is spearheading a campaign to raise awareness about opportunities available for St. Lucie County residents to work closer to home. The latest available workforce um, out commute, that's out commute data from 2018, indicates that 62% of St. Lucie County's workers travel outside the county for their jobs, according to the EDC and Jill. Wow. Uh, Jill serves as the president of retention and expansion uh, for the EDC. Of a total workforce of 119,000, 74,000 plus people living in the county commute to other counties for work while 44,724 live and work in St. Lucie. Another 32,000 plus of those working in the county commuted into St. Lucie from elsewhere. Okay, I was just going to ask you that. <clears throat> Wages are coming up locally, according to Jill. Uh, St. Lucie County's average hourly wage was $19.54. That's $19.54 in, in 2019. According to Enterprise Florida's annual wage report, wages in Indian River County were $20.76. Martin, $20.68. And in Okeechobee County, $17.24. You know, and, and I love the way they kind of look at these things. Spending an hour a day commuting to earn about $10 um, more for that day before the cost of gas and wear and tear in your car uh, isn't something many St. Lucie County residents need to do. Uh, not when there are great opportunities that are beginning yep. to happen right here. Uh, although the $26 and 75 uh, cent average hourly wage in Palm Beach County remains about 37% higher than St. Lucie's average 120 mile daily round trip between yeah. St. Lucie County and West Palm cost about Almost seventy dollars. Oh, you bet. Yeah. Based on IRS uh, IRS mileage rates, that's more than the additional fifty seven sixty two you'll earn before taxes. Yep. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. um, to showcase available local job opportunities, the EDC has created a web a web page. It's youredc.com forward slash work local. Uh, organized by industry sectors, information and links to local companies are listed for each sector aquaculture, uh, agriculture, aviation, distribution, logistics, healthcare, manufacturing, the marine industry, as we will directors speak, part of that professional services, skilled trades and others. Uh, according to Jill, 18 companies are participating in this work local program so far, and they are hiring. The site also includes links to area employment and staffing services. Again, it is your edc.com slash work local incredible program a uh, work local campaign also want to talk about the walmart distribution center is now hiring full-time positions starting at 17 uh, plus an hour uh, you can join the team today for a great career uh, opportunity if you're looking to work local with competitive wages great benefits excellent opportunities to advance and more uh, they're having a career information sessions, having multiple sessions. You can meet with their hiring team to explore available employment opportunities at the Walmart Distribution Center. Uh, you can also find information on all this at info at your edc.com. Again, uh, the date is tomorrow, Friday, April the 30th. Session times are 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11 a.m. This is all going to take place at our Indian River State College Blackburn campus, room 214 and 215. That's at uh, 3002 Avenue D. That is tomorrow, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., Walmart Distribution Center, career 
a day, immediate interviews with hiring managers on site tomorrow. I could walk over there. That you could great. walk over there and yeah. may walk home with a, with a job offer. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I also want to talk about um, big, big news. Um, I don't, uh, hopefully everybody at some point's heard about this, but the restaurant revitalization fund is hitting the streets tomorrow. Registration opens tomorrow for the restaurant revitalization fund. Applications will open on Monday. All right. So uh, if you're not familiar with the restaurant revitalization fund, this is part of the, um, the funding um, that just was signed into um, to law. And there is twenty eight point six billion dollars set aside for restaurants and some hospitality type industries. Are you saying a B? <clears throat> I'm saying that's a B. That's wow. twenty six point wow. eight billion dollars. Um, so, uh, again, pretty simple and straightforward program. Now, there is applications you've got to fill out. You've got to provide documentation. But the good news is, who's here to help you? The Florida Small Business Development Center at Indian River State College. We're here to help you with your application for this. We are also conducting, and we started today, we are conducting webinars with the SBA to uh, help you get an overview understanding of this restaurant revitalization fund. We've got webinars tomorrow, April the 30th at 9 a.m., we have one tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. We have it again on Monday, the May 3rd at 9 a.m. and in the afternoon at 2 p.m. So we've got four more information sessions between now and Monday. Uh, and uh, you can always call us at the 772-336-6285 to register for one of these sessions, or we will just simply help you with the information. If you also go to sb, sba.gov, uh, and I think if you type in uh, and it's forward slash restaurants, it'll take you to the page. I, I may be wrong on that, but you'll get there somehow. Uh, all kinds of information on that sba.gov site about the restaurant revitalization fund. All right. That's great. great that man. is coming up and uh, opening up, and we will be happy to help you with your application. Uh, the Florida SBDC uh, is presenting in partnership with the Office of U.S. Senator Marco Rubio. We are hosting the Virtual Small Business Resiliency Conference. Uh, you can join us for this no-cost Virtual Small Business Resiliency Conference. It's called Sustain the Pivot on May 18th and 19th. Uh, Florida's small businesses are invited to register for the Virtual Small Business Resiliency Conference, Sustain the Pivot, a no-cost event hosted by the Florida Small Business Development Center Network and U.S. Senator Marco Rubio. The event will take place May 18th and 19th. This multi-day virtual conference will equip Florida small businesses with the strategies and resources needed to navigate the ongoing challenges of COVID-19 and connect them with resources and providers who can aid in the long-term recovery. This event will feature presentations from the Florida SBDC Network business consultants on topics like marketing, cybersecurity, capital access, and human resources. Consultants will share business insights and discuss how attendees can leverage the network's uh, service offering of no-cost consulting, training, and resources each half day Session will conclude with a post-event presentation in Spanish. Again, this is Tuesday, May 18th from 1 to 5, Wednesday, May 19th from 9 to 1. It's virtual. The cost, there is none, no cost, open to the public. You need to RSVP by May 13th. It's www.sustainthepivot.eventbrite.com. Or again, you can just always contact us uh, at 336-6285. We'll be happy to get you registered for the event. Yeah, and Marco Rubio's on the front cover of your mag. That's right. And he is going to speak at the event. Very cool. 
Uh, and the last uh, training event I want to talk about, another very innovative event we got going on, it's called Better Business Program. We are partnering with Main Street Fort Pierce. We are partnering with the Lincoln Park Main Street Program, Pamela Carithers and her team. And we are also partnering with our good friends, uh, Elijah Wooten and the city of Port St. Lucie to create this Better Business Program. Um, it is five nights of training. Uh, going to be understanding sales and marketing, introduction to internet marketing and customer engagement through social media, time management, social media in today's changing environment, and financial literacy. Again, you can contact us at 336-6285 to get more information on this better business training program. Um, And for there, there may be some grant money available at the end of those programs. All right. And then finally, as always, I want to make sure that we, um, there it is. <laughs> latest. Cliff, Cliff's got a bigger camera. That's right. Somewhere. Latest, there latest is. edition yep. of um, Treasure Coast Business Magazine is out. And just uh, so that we, so that Justin feels like we've, uh, we've done all <laughs> the right things. I think, uh, hold on, let me see. I'm pretty sure. I believe we're in there. There's a picture of him on top. I'm of pretty the, sure there's uh, a picture. I don't oh, know about there. that. There's a picture of that that big lift that we yeah, just talked about. There, there it is. Yep. There it is. There we go. Look at there. So latest edition, uh, spring 2021 issue of Treasure Coast Business Magazine's out. Uh, great cover story um, in, in this magazine about all the boat manufacturers uh, that have you know, that are here and we've got a few new ones that have moved into town. Uh, obviously, uh, there's some verbiage about director and what they're doing. So again, a great, great issue article in there from uh, Senator Rubio's office about the uh, sustaining the pivot. Um, uh, again, some great business articles in there from the SBDC. Um, St. Lucie Battery and Tires featured uh, in this issue. Happy uh, 50th. Hits, that's right. Hits half a century mark. So again, I encourage you to get your latest uh, copy of um, of TC Business. There's our there's our Senator Marco Rubio. How about that, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, great edition. And as I always say, my guarantee you is uh, my guarantee to you is that if you can't find one of these, call me and I'll personally deliver it. Yep. And um, uh, right. Tom will have his uh, wife's cell phone number. <laughs> uh, on the television screen right. and you I mean, can call it anytime right. just oh. call my wife anytime um, <laughs> and she will be happy to get the message to me and just provide her with your address and i will get you a magazine so again uh great great publication thank you as always to greg greg ends and and his entire team at indy river magazine uh, for helping us and, and and allowing us to be a partner with him on that publication so with that shoo okay i'm out of breath a lot going on in terms of training, support, grant programs. Listen, folks, it's out there. Call us. We will give you all the details. I know we kind of hit the high points, but just get in touch with us and we'll be happy to, to give you the details. So with that, I want to quickly get to our guest because we got a lot to talk about because there's a lot going on. It's the, it's the hottest topic uh, around the Treasure Coast. It is director. And again, we've got our good friend, Justin Beard. Uh, sales and marketing uh, development director uh, with director. Uh, Justin, again, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, Justin, yeah, uh, give us a quick, uh, give us a quick uh, little bit of background and, and, and pathway uh, that you took to get to director and, and here in Fort Pierce. Well, interestingly enough, my, my pathway here includes uh, Joe Maressa of all people. Wow. Uh, okay. Jill and I actually graduated from the same uh, leadership course through the Martin County uh, Stuart Martin Chamber. I believe it was class 22 that we went through together. So that was cool. Yeah. So Jill and I, we go way back, um, back to my time where I was working with United Way Martin County. But but prior to that, if if, uh, I'll try and, and do a quick synopsis of my bio, but I am, um, you know, I'm from Vero Beach originally, grew up surfing and fishing all around the Vero, Sebastian, Stewart area, called the Treasure Coast, and then went to school in St. Augustine at Flagler College for okay. public relations, journalism, minored in advertising. And then when I graduated back in 04, that's when the hurricanes 
hit, um, you know, the Fort Pierce, well, the Treasure Coast area. And um, I, like most college students, I couldn't get a job right out of the gate. So I went into construction. And so I was installing windows and doors with a company called HBS Glass and Vero and uh, did that for a few months. And then uh, ironically enough, landed a job as a design associate building display ads for the Vera Beach Press Journal. Uh, th the funny thing is, is that I'm colorblind. <laughs> so um, <laughs> being able to did design you, ads. Did you, did you, uh, did, you un, uh, did you disclose that in the interview or? Uh... <laughs> I may or may not have mentioned that, but it's newspaper. <laughs> Everything's gray. Right. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I got the job working for the PJ and, uh, uh, shortly after working with the advertising team, I jumped ship to editorial and I worked with Amy Brunges and Brightman Brock and JT Turner, um, on the yourhub.com publication and Rick Baxter, uh, his wife, Lisa, I know she's a, a big, or she works for IRSC. So I uh, had the opportunity to, to work there. And um, I worked for Mike Graham on the sports, in the sports section, writing the weekly surfing column, which I used to come into the, the studio down in Stewart and do updates on, um, uh, uh, from the Snook Nook. I would go, uh, was it Captain? Uh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. So I go in and uh, with Fred and the guys there at the downtown location and, and do the surfing report. And so that, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed that. Um, then I, then I, like I had mentioned before, I was marketing and uh, communications director for United Way of Martin County and did that for a number of years, really enjoyed it, got pretty heavily involved with the FPRA and volunteering in the community and, um, you, you know, just being civically active. <clears throat> and then I opened a door to uh, an opportunity with Mile High United Way in Denver. So you guys were talking earlier about the, the ball players going to Kansas. I was very much that same impressionable young person that hadn't really spent that much time in snow. Um, I actually moved to the top of a mountain in Golden and uh, was commuting to Denver for work. I, I did that for about three years, managing uh, relationships with various corporate partners in the Metro Denver area. I, I worked with United Launch Alliance, Comcast, CenturyLink, Nationwide Insurance, uh, Coors. That was probably my favorite account was Coors. Nice. Um, my parting gift from those guys <laughs> was 22 cases of beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, isn't there, isn't there headquarters in Golden? It's in Golden. So I yeah. spent plenty of time at the brewery, and that was my favorite place to go. It was on the way home. And I could just pop in and say hello to my friends there at the brewery and um, had the pleasure of meeting Pete Coors and, and really just enjoyed my time when I was in Colorado. Um, He's but, a good guy. Very good. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. A huge conservation conservationist and the Coors family has really done a lot for the Denver area and Colorado for, for um, conservation and just in, in the forefront of innovation with, the um, the canning and bottle and everything they're doing there, um, so it was it was a lot of fun being able to to get experience at that level, and um, you know, but I kind of got sick and tired in the mountains and the cold and the Denver traffic. And Terrible the surfing too. Yeah. yeah, I know. I could snowboard, but it wasn't the same as surfing. So moved back to to Florida and um, you know started doing my independent consulting with the marketing and. Picked up a job bartending at Walking Tree Brewery in Vero, and um, just luck would have it, this opportunity with director popped up, and I, um, I I took a chance, and it's been a really great opportunity, and and I'm excited for what this is going to bring to my hometown. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm one of those young folks that I couldn't necessarily find an opportunity here that fit, and so I left, but I came back, and what I'm excited about is the opportunity that we've got to keep our young folks here and not take their talents elsewhere and make other communities better. Great, great story, uh, uh, Justin. And, and it, it is nice to have the, you know, our local young folks come back and have opportunities. So great story. And we're glad to have you back. Talk to us, give us kind of the overview of director who is director, you know, what's their history and, and what's their primary uh, focus. 
So Director is a very interesting company because they've got a very unique history. Um, Bob Director, well, Robert, but he's known as Bob Director. He, he started the company back in 1947 and his mission was really simple. It was build the best wooden boats um, with no compromises when it came to craftsmanship and craftsmanship and quality. So he stuck to it. And Bob really was, um, uh, he was, uh, and he was ahead of his time when it came to boat building, boat design, boat innovation, even sales and marketing. He, he had a brand, he built it and the boats he, he made a lot of them, most of them are still in operation, whether it's a work boat, a sailboat or a yacht, um, the 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 one thing that director is really known for is high quality and and good work. And so the the company was founded in Bamaranek, New York, again in 1947, and that's where the the wooden sailboats were built. That yard has changed over the years based on the market and how the company has evolved to to match client and in need. And so that yard now is primarily a commercial yard. So we service a lot of the ferries, the transit ferries that, that um, go around the New York, New Jersey area. We build a hybrid catamaran. In fact, we're building our fourth hybrid catamaran now that's for the University of Vermont. That vessel should be launched sometime next year. So we're about a year away from completion on, on that one. Uh, while we're up in the Northeast, We've got another yard that's Director Robin Hood, and that's in Georgetown, Maine. Now that yard is new. I believe the company purchased that back in 2016. And that yard is really a, um, it's, a it's a destination for sailboats. And the sailboats in the, in the summertime head up to that area and recreate in Riggs Cove and just enjoy the beautiful Maine landscape. It's a beautiful facility with a boat, with a smaller travel lift and a full service um, uh, shipyard where you can get anything done from paint to refit to all sorts of stuff. There's actually a foundry where we make bronze hardware for sailboats at that facility. And so it's a, it's a very popular destination. Um, so is there a dry dock up there as well? No, no, not, not in Maine. There's just a, a small travel lift okay. that's at that facility. And, um, and then you've got the Dania Beach facility. So Dania Beach was, was established in 1967. And again, that was Bob Director coming down here with the racing sailboats, these 12 meter boats, the America's Cup, um, all those boats when they were doing the circuit in the Caribbean and through South Florida needed an outpost for service, provisioning and to get work done. Who better than Bob Director who at that time was uh, switching over to the composite haul boats and really building some some fast some fast ships with um, you know that was the Sparkman and Stevens design a lot of the 12 meter you know um, well in the 80s there was the Stars and Stripes with Ted Turner that brought the right. America's Cup home but but regardless it was started with focus on sailboats and racing boats now as that Fort Lauderdale air, area began to get established. As, as what we call the yachting capital of the world, you, you find there's um, just the highest concentration of highly skilled craftsmen and women in the industry that work out of the Fort Lauderdale area. And so as yachts became, it became the Mecca for yachts, that yard uh, shifted to start servicing the, the yacht industry. And as yachts have grown in size, as has our capacity, for hauling them out in service and refit work in that yard. And the company in 2011, uh, or excuse me, 2012, uh, commissioned the 900 ton mobile boat hoist. And at the time that was the largest machine in the world. And since then we've hauled hundreds of boats out and put them on the hard and, and done everything from survey to routine maintenance to uh, extensive refit and paint work on, on those vessels. Um, and then that positioned the company to really go after the larger market. As I mentioned, yachts are, are ever growing in size. And nowadays, uh, a yacht now, if you're, if you're shorter than 200 feet, is considered a small yacht. And so, 
um, wow. you know, the, the need for these boats to, to have service work done and refit is, is there. And in the U.S., you've got limited options when it comes to boats in the 200, the 250 foot range that need to come out of the water for service. Wow. And so that's why the company was eyeballing Fort Pierce and, and entered into the lease with St. Lucie County to open the yard here. Well, you know, you mentioned, you talked about uh, any boat smaller than 200. It's kind of considered now a small one. Kind of e- explain this mega yacht um, market. Uh, you, you said, of course, Lauderdale. And it really is mm-hmm. quite shocking when you drive down that main thoroughfare in mm-hmm. Lauderdale today from 95 East. Um, what amazes me is the the canals. They're full of these yachts. It's, it really mm-hmm. is. I mean, you it's it's. It's obvious you you cannot miss them driving down uh, the the main drag there in in Lauderdale. But explain this mega yacht market. So yeah, like like anything, yachts are just getting larger, uh, and it and it really depends on what the purpose of the boat is. So you've got the one of the things that's very popular now are these explorer yachts. These lot or these yachts are set up for expeditions. Now whether it's a scientific expedition or a sport fishing expedition, you're still going on an adventure and you need to be able to carry a lot of equipment. And so these, these vessels carry everything from submarines to uh, Viking sport fishing boats is their tenders. So it's- Wait a uh, minute, back up a second. <laughs> a Viking boat is a tender for one of it, those? Sure, <laughs> sure. So, so, oh, man. so it's, it's an entirely different, um, stratosphere really when you think about what what you're intending to do with some of these vessels and and so when you've got the large boat it's um you know and then but also i will say that some of them are are floating offices many of them are floating offices for their owners so you've got owners who they we had talked earlier you had talked earlier about commuting to work well these guys their commute is a helicopter they helicopter in land on the boat they conduct business and then they chop her out and then they go on to whatever it is. So it's um, it really just depends on the, the purpose of the vessel. But at the end of the day, these vessels need an extensive amount of work. They they carry a large crew. Some of them carry a crew of up to 30 people and can accommodate a dozen or more guests. And when you think about that, you think about this this floating business that really does have tentacles that support uh, quite a few other bi- business interests, whether it's the staff on the boat that the works the boat or the staff that actually provide provide service to keep the maintenance up on that vessel when it comes in for its yard period. So uh, now we sort of understand the mega yacht. Talk mm-hmm. to us about the mega yacht facility. I mean, what talk to us about the Fort Pierce facility. And of course, everybody wants to hear about the the massive um you know, crane. So talk a little bit about the facility and what kind of equipment have you got there and, and what are you going to be able to actually, you know, do uh, at the facility? Okay. So uh, ironically enough, the, this is the centennial of the opening of the Fort, uh, the Fort Pierce Inlet. And it just, it's, it's, it's sort of ironic that now the opening of the yard is coinciding with that. And what we're, what we're doing is we're taking an 80-year-old packing house and converting it into a world-class repair and refit facility for the largest yachts and sailing yachts in the world. And so what, we are, what we're intending to do is provide anything from, well, it's, it's going to be a full-service shipyard. So they're going to be able to come in for paint, for fabrication, for welding, plumbing provisioning they could clear customs any conceivable need that has to be provided to support one of these boats is going to be done at the yard and with the machine that that you had mentioned our intent is to haul boats that are up to 250 feet in length in some cases slightly longer depending on displacement we could haul a slightly longer sailing yacht because it's a it's made of it's a lighter boat so you could haul a longer boat but the intent is to haul these vessels out of the water, place them on the hard, and it, they could be on the hard for a matter of a month or a few months or even a year, depending on what the need is 
and and what kind of um, how deep the project goes because when you're working on these boats sometimes you and well it's a boat so you always uncover some stuff that you didn't realize was right. beneath the surface and um, obviously uh, our port and turning basin and inlet mm -hmm. really pr probably was absolutely perfect for for what for for the needs of a of a shipyard like directors uh, a building sure you could say it's the ideal location it's it's ideally located in close proximity to south florida and it is it, the the entry into the the inlet is 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 fantastic it's one of the deepest widest inlets between port canaveral and port everglades and at a depth of 28 feet you could bring in some of the largest boats of the world the very unique part of it is the air draft it's unlimited so we can bring in the some of the tallest boats in the world i'm not sure if you're paying attention to some of the sailing yachts that we had in recently yeah. but there was a large catch rig the the, the two masted vessel that 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 main mast was 215 feet tall and so that 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 boat couldn't get in i couldn't go under the bridge the the air draft of the bridge i think is the south causeway there 65 feet right yeah and, and you're right i mean we have no obstruction coming into yeah. our inlet yep wow you know a few years back the new york times did a feature on fort pierce harbor and mm -hmm. the fact that it was the last developable port. Well, yeah, last undeveloped on the yeah. eastern sea, mm -hmm. right. which uh, you know is is perfect for you. Well, and guys. again, you're not even developing the entire port property. I mean, you're just you're developing kind of the uh, the northernmost piece. The the other there's still there's still developable land, bulkheaded property that's still at our port. Correct. That's correct. So the. The area that we're at is only about 12 acres of the existing, what you could consider the wharf area. You've got Bile Brothers who, uh, who owns a property to the south. And then there's Sandy Woods who owns the property just to the north of us. And then of course the Bell family owns the 67 acres of, of undeveloped land to the north of us that's in between the wharf and um, the park there that's right, right there next to Taylor Creek. Correct. And so, that uh, that area is, is it, well, I know that Stan and his team, they've worked very diligently with the uh, port master plan that they, they unveiled that late last year, that is a very ambitious plan, but I think that they, he's got a grand vision. And if any of that comes to fruition, it's, it's really gonna be a major economic driver for the area. And as you mentioned, there's other marine builder or boat builders that are, that are making waves here on the Treasure Coast. And as they grow, you know, Contender and Malibu Boats is growing with their brands with Pursuit and Maverick. Right. You can't leave out Twin V and some of the other yeah. boat builders that are around. It's yep. it's gonna be a seismic shift in, in the economic landscape yeah. and it's exciting to see. Yeah, well, again, and I mentioned that uh, the cover story in this issue of Treasure Coast Business Magazine is really about uh, the expanding marine industry uh, in our region. And, and uh, you mentioned contender. I mean, here's, you know, and what I, what I like to tell folks is we build some of the most valuable brands um, right here in St. Lucie County and along the treasure coast. I mean, pursuit, Maverick, contender, twin V, like you say, these are very valuable high end brands. Um, really beautiful stuff being built right here. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk just, uh, you, you mentioned, and you said you can bring out a 250 foot yacht. Talk a little bit about this lift. What makes this unique? Is it, am I right to say it's one of the largest in the world and, and, and where was it built and, and give us a little background on this actual lift that I'm sure thousands of people have driven downtown. to see. <laughs> so the machine is a 1500 ton mobile boat hoist. And it was manufactured by a company called Chimalai Technology, and they're located in northern Italy. And the machine was, uh, was pre-assembled. It was fabricated and pre-assembled in Italy and then shipped over to the Port of Miami on, in three different shipments. And then we had it trucked up 
to the port of Fort Pierce. And, and I, I want to say it was about 40 some odd semi trucks that came up to deliver uh, just batches at a time. Some, some days we took delivery of three shipments. Some days we took six or seven. Uh, we had a crew of 12 employees that worked six 10 hour days in a row for about 50 days straight to assemble the machine. And uh, it went together pretty seamlessly. There, there really weren't any hiccups with, uh, with the machine. We had two technicians that came over from Chimalai to oversee the assembly of it. And what the result is, again, is the largest mobile boat hoist in the world, uh, hauling capacity of 1,500 ton U.S. tons. And it, um, it's got an overall length at the wheels. So the base length is 120 feet long. And at the top, the, the upper beams are 105 feet long. And you've got a width of about 75 feet that's wheel to wheel. And you've got a height of 85 feet. Wow. And each of those, so there's 32 of the tires that are on the machine that roll it around. And each of those tires is nine feet tall. Wow. Now when they, so when they were finished assembling this lift, mm -hmm. no one walked over and said, I've got these six bolts. I don't know where they go. <laughs> There was no leftover nuts or bolts. And, and say it in Italian <laughs> too, right? Oh. <laughs> so every, you, you used all the pieces. That's, that's probably good. That, yeah. That's probably good. So, yes. Yeah. We followed the, we followed instructions. Well, we assembled the machine <laughs> and it's, um, it's built in its entirety. Nice. And just pray you don't get a flat on I-95. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. is, is, is St. Lucie battery and tire stock on any of those tires? <laughs> Do we need to call Joey to make sure he's got one of them in stock or anything? So we intend to wear those tires out. So I think uh, when it's due, we'll probably be talking to him to get uh, get one of those tires replaced. Good. Uh, talk to us about jobs. You know, you talked a little bit about uh, the work you'll do, welding, carpentry, uh, mm -hmm. engine work. I mean, talk about some of the jobs that are going to be available. Okay. So uh, at Director, we, although we're a full service shipyard, the, the work we do, we really do depend on subcontractors to help provide support for specialty work, such as air conditioning, peak decking, motors, generators. Some of that work that's going to be done that carries a warranty with it that is from a, a manufacturer like cat or just anybody who a, a vendor that would would honor the warranty that kind of work is done through a specialized subcontractor right. but what we focus on is some of the principles of uh, ship repair and ship building so that's outside mechanics machinists welders pipe fitters carpenters those trades that really help provide a well-rounded individual who can fit in in any department within the the company and so what's exciting is there's a variety of trades that are available for folks to learn and if there's one that really excites them then we want to try to push them towards that but also be well-rounded enough to step in and help in other areas um, to that effect we're actually in the process of getting our um, yacht technician our yacht service technician apprenticeship program um, accredited through the Florida Department of Education. Right. Um, Jill and Pete, um, the folks over at Career Source and St. Lucie Public Schools and Indian River State College. Uh, we've got a good group of about 17 or so folks that are working on bringing this apprenticeship program to the college. And uh, it's essentially a copy paste from what we've implemented in South Florida with right. Broward College and Atlantic Technical. And there'll be opportunities for employees once they've joined the team to get enrolled into the apprenticeship program and really start to learn some more of those uh, those trades. And then we can develop the a more skilled trades person through the apprenticeship. So tell us, because we're getting close on time and I don't want to forget. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. would a how would a subcontractor or someone interested, is there a place they can go to get more information mm -hmm. or contact you to begin the relationship as you guys start to get geared up? Sure. So they could uh, visit our website. We've got a contact us area on the site and you can just reach out to the team there. You could give me a call. My, uh, you know, my phone number is 772-4000. Uh, 
971-8144. And I can put you in contact with our yard manager that can get you the, uh, the standards of becoming a preferred subcontractor. We're also um, planning on having open houses to where we can have marine industry professionals come in and learn more about. We had one last month. And it looks like we were trying to do one this month, but it just didn't happen. It's looking like May is when we're going to have our next right. open house. Well, let us know and we will get the word out on that one taking place in May. So Certainly. again, uh, Justin, I cannot thank you enough for coming on tonight and uh, getting us all updated on what is really uh, exciting progress and, uh, and exciting news uh, in historic downtown Fort Pierce and uh, at the port of Fort Pierce. So keep up the great work. You know where to find us. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll have you back shortly uh, to give us another update as you guys really start to get this thing launched. Um, Tom, Greg, I appreciate your time and your interest. And I'd certainly welcome the opportunity to join you again, hopefully in person in the studio. And um, all I'll say is just make sure you keep an eye on the port here in the next month or so, because once that pad cures, We'll be hauling a boat soon. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we'll have a <laughs> we'll have a pad curing live remote uh, from your site. You won't have to come visit us. That works for me. <laughs> okay. All right, we're there. We're there. Thank you, Justin. All right, thank you. Gentlemen. Um, yep, thank you, sir. And with that, we'll bring to close another segment of Small Biz Florida from the Florida SBDC here at Indian River State College. You can always check out all that's going on at the irscbiz.com site. Uh, always, I uh, want to thank our partners here, Greg, uh, at WPSL, WSTU, and uh, always want to thank our Small Biz Florida producer, Miss Katie Muldoon. So with that, uh, we will bring to close this segment, and we'll talk to you next Thursday on Small Biz Florida. I wonder if Justin can do wheelies on the thing. <laughs> well, we'll save it for the next show and see. <laughs> we, we can do donuts. We can do donuts. You've been listening to Small Biz Florida right here on WPSL, Port St. Lucie. WSTU Stewart, Martin County's Heritage Station. <laughs>